Welcome back, VITA volunteers. In this advanced topic lesson, we will be delving a little deeper into the income, wages, interest, and etc. lesson of IRS Publication 4491 to cover qualified Medicaid waiver payments. The taxpayers who have this type of income will have qualified with the Washington State Department of Social and Health Services, or DSHS. Other states have this program too. But in Washington State, they will have qualified as an individual provider, which means that they will be contracted with the state to provide in-home caregiving for another person who is eligible to receive Medicaid in-home care services, a Medicaid client. It is important to note that the individual provider may be caring for their own relatives. This is allowed and is a very frequent arrangement for our taxpayers with this type of income. If you would like to know more about this program and how it works, there is more information at the DSHS link at the bottom of this slide. In Washington State, this income will be reported on Form W-2. The employer's name will be DSHS, and the employee section will have both the taxpayer's name and the name of the person who is cared for. So it will say the taxpayer's name for the name of the client. The IRS may treat this income like a difficulty of care payment. Section 131C defines a difficulty of care payment as compensation to a foster care provider for the additional care required because the qualified foster individual has a physical, mental, or emotional handicap. In order for this to be considered a difficulty of care payment, the provider must provide the care in the provider's family home, a state must determine the need for this compensation, and the payor, that's DSHS, must designate the compensation for this pur purpose. You can find more information about this in Notice 2014-7. And what is special about these difficulty of care payments is that they are excluded from in taxable income so long as the client lived in the provider's home. However, if they lived in separate homes, the income will be taxable. And this is one reason why you tend to see this in situations where the client is related to the caregiver. The family member will have gone through special training with the state to become qualified as an individual provider, and then the state pays the caregiver through Medicaid for the care uh, of the client that happens in that caregiver's home. Beyond living in the same home, uh, some of the other limitations on the excludability of this income include the number of clients that are living in that home. So if the qualified foster individuals are under the age of 19, that limit will be 10. And if the qualified foster individuals are 19 or older, the limit now drops to five. Even if the taxpayer excludes these amounts from their gross income, the payments may be treated as earned income for the purposes of the earned income credit and the additional child tax credit. However, this is an all or none scenario. Taxpayers are not able to only claim some of the income for the earned income credit in order to try to maximize that credit. Taxpayers must include all of the income or none of the income. So on the W-2 input screen and tax layer, you will enter the W-2 information from the form just as usual, but a little further down towards the box 14 inputs, you will see a checkbox that asks whether the taxpayer is including the Medicaid wa waiver payments in earned income, um, and also a box for entering the qualified Medicaid waiver amounts to exclude from the gross income.